But basically, I think it's a bunch of forum warriors who don't actually know, and they're just gonna give their opinions. Yeah. Jacob. There's no replacement for displacement. Yes, there is. Right there. Oh, what's hey. that? So, still at Rust Belt Garage, Jacob and I are going to put the old, what is it, a 2.4 liter? Yep. From the uh, PT, PT Bruiser. Bruiser. <laughs> We're gonna put that on the engine stand we got from Harbor Freight. We just went to the hardware store and picked up some metric bolts and that was really... Four bolts and four washers was 17 bucks. Yeah, which is just silly it's dumb. Silly. They were like M12 by 1.75 to go into this and they were like 90 millimeters long. So, we're gonna probably throw it on time lapse. All right, so we gotta run out to the store again because it turns out that Jacob's Harbor Freight two ton is not pumping anymore. It won't really go above this height. It just kind of gets angry. And so we're gonna buy some jack oil and bleed it. And we were just talking about using brake fluid and Jacob went on the forums and... Apparently it's bad for seals, which I guess kind of makes sense if they're not designed for that and it's Harbor Freight and probably make them as cheap as possible. <laughs> but I do, we were wondering how long it would actually take for it to damage the seals versus like putting hydraulic fluid in it. Yeah, so I mean- If anybody's ever tried it, we're really curious. Cause I found somebody on one of the forums was like somebody so-and-so used ATF for like 20 years on the same thing and it was fine. Yeah, again, there's rubber seals everywhere in a car. But ATF doesn't eat paint like brake fluid does, so I wonder if there's a difference between the two. Yeah, I mean, my whole thing is, there's rubber seals all throughout your brake system, like master cylinder, slate, or, or there's no slate cylinder, but like your pistons, but like a clutch system uses brake fluid too. That's yeah. got rubber seals. Like, I don't think that there's anything fundamentally different about this jack thing, just a rubber seal being pressed. That means that a brake fluid would hurt it, but other than maybe if passage sizes are too small and there actually is a viscosity difference, it might blow out a seal or something. But basically, I think it's a bunch of forum warriors who don't actually know and they're just gonna give their opinions. Yeah. I think, honestly, the brake fluid would last longer because it wouldn't absorb moisture as fast, so it might actually be better for it, because I'm yeah. assuming regular jack oil just soaks moisture up like crazy. A anyway. But viscosity was the only big difference between the two, is brake fluid's runny and hydraulic fluid's yeah. a little bit thicker and stickier. Something like that. But if you're an engineer, let us know. We could probably go to dot, dot five and use sil full silicone brake fluid. Yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, if you, if you actually know, leave a comment. Otherwise, you can leave your opinion and, and I'll still read it. But uh, but yeah, we're gonna go buy some jack oil because it's cheap anyways. All right, we're gonna we're gonna jack oil this thing now, and hopefully it'll work. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. They can always turn the engine part on the floor. But I don't want to. No. All right, well we bled it. We think we have it all the way full and hopefully it's gonna work. It was still a little weird, but it got past the point it wouldn't go past before. So hopefully we're good. We determined that this just has a bad pump, it seems like, because we did bleed it and fill it, but now if he pumps it, like, go ahead. See how it just, you can hear that noise and it just doesn't go any higher. So like the, it just goes up and then down and up and then down. And uh, we think that basically there's a bad spot in this on the machining and so there's just air blowing past the seal or fluid blowing past the seal when you try to pump it. But it did work when he had it way higher to take the engine out and it does work if we pull it up past that point. So it must just be a bad seal in there or whatever, bad place where it doesn't seal. So. I don't know, we're gonna probably take up the idea to jack this up with a floor jack so we can get it past that point, and then... All the weight off. There's, there's no weight on this thing we can get it up past that point, and that's fine, because I, I had the engine like 
a mile in the air. Yeah, the other he night. had that boom almost touching the roof. So we don't. Yeah, so we're just gonna try to get it past that, and then he can go to Harbor Freight and get the the pump replaced. Because yeah, we just need to get this engine on a stand. Yep. That's it. So we're gonna whip off the torque converter and trans, and then jack up the engine and hope we can get past the bad spot in the pump. Yeah, just uh, I like to grease them because they don't rotate that well. Anyway, we did get the engine on the stand. We were hoping to get it like more torn apart tonight, but it is getting kind of late, and Jacob's got to go for like job orientation tomorrow. Yeah. And so we're probably just gonna leave it here and like clean up. But the Harbor Freight engine stand is doing good. Harbor Freight crane needs a new pump. Um, it was kind of weird to get this thing bolted up because there's only two actual bolts in the engine. Like only two bolts go in, the rest go to the transmission side. And these are just, the, luckily these fit around the dowels, which is real cool. So we just used some bolts there. Um, there's like a bracket that the transmission bolted to down here, but it's not threaded either. It was really weird because most of the threads are actually in the transmission. Yeah, um, no, it's, yeah, yeah, so. Thread, 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 thread. These two are straight And then the starters. starters. Yeah, so that's kind of weird. Um, yeah, and one of the dowels went right there. Yeah, one of the dowels goes to nowhere, and one of the dowels goes to uh, threads. Yeah, so, so that's, that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of odd. Weird. Um, but whatever, anyway, we got it up here. He thinks it dropped the valve. Cylinder four has absolutely no compression. So the camera did die, but as I was saying, there's gonna be a full teardown of this on Rust Belt Garage. So go click the little link up here and subscribe to the RBG. And we're probably, like I said, just gonna clean up and then we might start this, so that'd be pretty cool. That massive, massive beast. Also, don't forget, Jacob does have this, which is a V6 Dakota that he has turbocharged. And he's gonna do some more upgrades to this too, like a manual transmission swap. He's got it on a mega squirt with his own ignition system. He's figuring out the timing on that. He's actually working with the guys at, what's that website? Uh, DIY Autotune. DIY Autotune is helping him work out a crank trigger for this because it's got an uneven firing order. It's like a V6 that likes to shake itself apart, right? It's very, very wobbly and there's vibrations are pretty bad. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's really bad with the manual transmission and solid balance, which is exactly what I'm doing. And a turbo. I'm probably going to hate this thing by the time it's done. It's going to be fantastic. This truck just screams cool to me, though. Like, look at that. That's like real patina. That ain't no rat rod. I wish it was running because the, the sounds that thing makes, it sounds like, like a GTR almost with a really ugly exhaust. <laughs> it is. It's pretty insane. The turbo noises are pretty wild. So de definitely go check out his videos. And, uh, yeah, he's been more than kind to have me here on my trip. So, but, yeah, just look at this thing. It's so cool. That's all natural like nobody did that to the paint even the hood even the hood has some real just it's like maybe had hail damage and they turned into rust spots the roof has a nice yeah it's it's sick so i love this thing and he's gonna have it up and running so definitely go watch his channel and yeah this thing is kind of like my v10 but with four less cylinders because the v10 is also an uneven firing order but i think mine will be a little bit smoother maybe yeah it should be because the the gap between firing is not as big on the v10 because we're more cylinders yeah this thing if you ever watch when idling they just shake jacob constantly. there's no replacement for displacement yes there is it's right there oh What's hey. that? It's, is, is that a magic unicorn fart device? I think so. Oh, fair like, enough. Like, it's weird because I have some extra displacement, but I also have the replacement for it. There you go. 
It's the best of all worlds, or except- you can have displacement and replacement. <laughs> but it's all old and, and Chrysler-y and shaky and has hideous exhaust manifolds that have two there and one there and yeah. and two oil caps okay. because yeah. Because why wouldn't you want engine. two oil caps? I'm pretty sure this was a parts bin engine because it was a replacement. Yeah, Chrysler had to replace it <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> anyway, check out Rosebell Garage. We're probably going to start this thing up. All right, we, we're going to try to start this beast. It's running on like one or two. Well, it's running on all of them technically, but they are firing at the completely wrong time for this engine. Yeah, the timing is just... Yeah, out of firing order, so basically only cylinder one and maybe cylinder four at the right time. Who knows? But it will idle at least. Oh yeah, the fuel pump doesn't ever shut off. So much shake. Yeah. You can see just when it's turning over how far off it is. I hear fuel going through somewhere. Yeah, it's because the fuel pump doesn't shut off. Yeah, it sounds okay now. Yeah, but it's, uh, it won't, like, as soon as I put it into gear, it stalls out. So it's probably only using one or two cylinders. But you can see the shaking is right now. I don't know why it's not shaking as much as normal, but it might be because all the cylinders aren't firing right. <laughs> Let it warm up for a second, then I can rev it. Well, right. yeah, because now it's firing evenly, just wrong. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really bad. <laughs> Jacob's got the old laptop gauges out. Yep, none of my stock gauges work except for my fuel gauge and pressure gauge, which is a dummy switch. <laughs> Does it make any fun noises? It's angry. It's angry. It's not happy. No. It does run, though. It does run. And it wobbles a 